And today we have with us Jamie McIntosh, our Real Career Product Manager. Jamie has been with RealityWorks for nine years and came to RealityWorks with an extensive education background as a former educator teaching in Wisconsin and in Colorado. His topics cover student engagement, technology in the classroom, filling the skills gap, gaming, business education, and various agriculture and welding topics. So he's a pretty great resource for today's webinar, so I'll pass things over to Jamie. All right, thank you very much, Emily, and really appreciate everyone uh, being here for the uh, tips for starting a hydroponics program, and really appreciate you taking the time uh, out of your busy schedules in this uh, very unique time, and really appreciate you uh, for what you're doing and your interest in this topic. So I um, want to just kind of walk through and, and move through uh, a few uh, pieces here, but before we get uh, too far here. Um, just a few reminders. We are going to be recording this. We will be sending this out along with all of our resources and um, things that we talk about today. So you will get that in email um, in the upcoming days. Uh, so what you see here is something that you also be getting for your participation in this. So just a few reminders in our Zoom meeting. Um, you should be seeing uh, in your world here, there's a chat feature um, and a question answer. So you can go ahead and hit that chat or that question and answer section, and that will allow you to ask questions as we go through. So if you have a question, even if I'm talking about it, feel free to fill that uh, um, chat section out there and ask a question. Um, we will have a spot at the end of the uh, presentation for you to ask, but this will give you an opportunity to uh, not forget about it. And if I do miss it um, while I'm speaking, we will uh, go back and look for those and, and uh, um, check on that as well. So um, we will be uh, uh, focusing in on, on that as well. So um, <clears throat> what we're going to be uh, starting here with is um, just to kind of get you into what we're talking about is all of our curriculum that we are going to talk about today is online. It is free to use um, and it's kind of with uh, our COVID-19 response and how we're trying to help and, and work with you um, as educators. So in this case here, wanna walk you through that, what you can do. So what you need to do in this case is as we talk about the hydroponics curriculum that we offer, um, you can go and you click on the learn more. And when you click on the lean, learn more, it's gonna come up to resources, including our webinars, some uh, lessons on uh, career exploration, and soft skill development. But where you're gonna to wanna to go is our guides and curriculum. And when you click on that, it then takes you into all of our different uh, product lines that we offer, and it has our curriculums in there. And so what, in this case, our hydroponics and plant science, you'll go down to the plant producer and plant lab educational hydroponic systems, and that will bring you in to our curriculum and slideshow downloads, allowing you to be able to view all of those um, uh, features there that you um, uh, are kind of looking for in that sense. So if that is something that you would like the curriculum, it's right there on our website for you to go in, download and be able to use at this time, um, kind of as our COVID-19 response. So um, with that being said, it also has our user guides for our hydroponic system. So you can look at them, see kind of what is all involved there, if that is something that you are looking to go. Forward. So with being said, as we start this uh, hydroponics uh, world uh, uh, presentation in the world we're in right now, we always say, you know, to remember social distancing. So like the plants, they need a certain amount of space to grow well. Uh, we hope that you will continue to do that as um, we continue to find ways to um, get back to our norm normalcy. So with that being said, let's get started. So what we're going to talk about today is <clears throat> in our um, uh, I guess what I would say is hydroponically speaking is really three main focuses. We're going to talk about um, understanding on the importance of hydroponics and why it would be something you'd want to bring in to your educational experience. Then we're going to kind of go in and view five steps to starting a program and some things for you to think about um, if you start it. Now, for some of you, maybe you already have a program started. So this might be something that you've already walked through, or maybe there's something in here that you um, look to in the next year or so that you could be uh, moving into uh, where you may want to, to look at, okay, how do we do it a little different? And then we'll finish off with learning about the um, hydroponics curriculum and our educational systems that we have here at RealityWorks that might be a fit for you. So 
starting with the five key reasons for hydroponics. So the first one is really a lot of times it's a limited space issue. Um, some cases it's that thing of, I want to grow different produce. I want to grow something, but you may not have the space to do it. A lot of times in, in school settings, you may not have um, a ability to um, use, uh, you know, a lot of land resource. And so it's going to be a difficult thing to be able to grow. Um, maybe you just don't have the ability or another piece is um, in, in certain areas, especially cities, there just isn't that location in some schools to actually use a large footprint to be able to grow um, different produce. And so this allows people to grow in a limited space, um, as well as right in your classroom, right in areas that maybe you never thought you could actually do it. In cases with our hydroponic systems, we have people who are, have been interested in, in looking at this um, from, you know, states like Alaska where they don't have um, sunlight full year. They don't have the warm weather to be able to grow a lot of times. So in this case, it allows you to be able to um, grow uh, in a dark, you know, um, basement with no lights or with no uh, windows whatsoever because of the type of growing that hydroponics allows you to do. Um, another opportunity here is the ability to use it because it's clean and, um, and efficient in the sense of hydroponics farming is a, a very clean type of growing system. Um, again, you're using water, you're not using soil, uh, you're using um, uh, artificial lighting, you're using artificial wind to sources. And so, um, and then you're using water. And so really it's a opportunity for you to um, even do some organic type growing. It allows you to do it very efficiently um, and and grow on a, a, and we'll talk about this a little later, but in a, in a manner that is very, um, that can reduce the amount of time for it to be harvested. So it's something also to where and what we call is the closed environments for year on growing. Again, kind of going back to the weather is a big piece of um, growing and the growing seasons in, in the United States and around the world. And when you use hydroponics, it really changes your world where you can now have a closed environment. You don't have to worry if it's going to rain or not every day. You don't have to worry if the sun's going to come out. You are creating that opportunity um, with your system. And that allows you to always kind of know what the system's going to do. And so those variables are taken away and that can be very helpful um, for, for thinking of and using a hydroponic world. Um, another opportunity is this one really hits home, I think right now, as we are seeing issues with, um, you know, and, and in the United States right now with COVID-19 and other issues is this food shortage or the worry, concern of food shortage that is happening. It may not actually, we may not have seen it in certain areas, but there's a concern that this could be a problem. Hydroponic farming can allow and help this uh, food shortage. Again, with this kind of situation, you can do it very, very cleanly. You can do it in a sense where you don't have an environmental factor. Um, you can uh, do it in a, a warehouse and in, in pretty much any location, as long as you have electricity and you have the nutrients and, and the uh, water, you're able to then start growing. And so again, this takes away some of that concern that could come and that reliability on sources from far away. This allows you to do it very close to home or in your home and be, allow you to um, get those uh, different types of um, foods that you uh, may want or may need. Um, another piece of this is just the ability for, uh, you know, not only the weather and where it is, but especially in schools and a lot of teachers who are looking at this, especially in the culinary area, what we really found is if there are certain types of produce or plants that you would like to have, but they're seasonal, this is a place where all of a sudden you can get those types of plants, those types of produce, those types of products year round. This is something where you can be growing it even though it's not in season in your area and you don't have to um, pay a higher cost for the shipping it in. You can make it yourself, you can grow it yourself. And a lot of times within that culinary, there are sometimes too where some grocery stores or um, some places where you get your food from, they don't have of certain types of produce that you would like to have. You would like to have your students be able to um, try and experiment with. This allows you some of that food shortage of even when and, and how much you can get, it allows you to kind of be in control of that situation. So there's some really neat opportunities here with being able to grow your own food that kind of puts you in the driver's seat as well with hydroponics. Um, 
Another piece of hydroponics, and I touched on a little bit here, is that ability to grow uh, in a faster and a more timely opportunity. So one of the things we found and what uh, hydroponics has really been uh, neat um, with a lot of different uh, growing methods is that it reduces the time between the planting and the harvesting. And the reason is because you have be able to control the variables. You are deciding how much light and how often the light or the, the sun, if you wanna say the grow lights are, are going to be um, uh, helping grow the, the produce. You help and decide how much water and nutrients are going to be used. And you can also change that and tweak that to try to get it so it's the best possible um, option. So then your grow rates are at the fastest that they can do. We'll talk a little bit later about some of those kind of focuses of, of the timing and how, how quickly you can get to, to uh, the the ability to produce and harvest your plants. The other piece is some biosecurity and again, environmental factors can cause problems to your growing. By having this controlled environment, this closed environment, all of a sudden you can kind of um, uh, move away from the concerns that sometimes the, the weather may have. Or if you're in a classroom and you're expecting something to grow and it doesn't, that can put you out of, you know, the next lesson or the next things you're trying to treat, cheat, teach, excuse me. And so this helps with that, that world and being able to help you in that, that sense. So the um, last one here is, again, the ability to really test and experiment with your students. So being able to um, show and test is, is something that can really um, help you um, in this case, uh, allows you to um, grow your, your uh, uh, produce as you want to do it. Now, what that can, the problem that can happen there is with that um, test ability, you may sometimes um, not grow it as you thought you did. And so there's learning opportunities that come from that. You may experiment and it doesn't work, allowing again for a rich opportunity for students to really think about and critical think, why did it work? Or maybe you create something that you didn't know was even possible and it just opens up new things. So there's allowing you to challenge new and uh, different growing methodologies and allowing you to seek out what are the problems and how do you fix those problems. So there's a wealth of opportunity for growing in this world and, and being able to uh, uh, work with that. So I want to talk a little bit about um, our uh, kind of five keys to starting a hydroponic system. So want to um, kind of go in here a little bit now, and those are kind of some, as you kind of ping down the list there, just some things of why hydroponics might be be a possible thing or a positive thing that you might want to use, but want to talk through, okay, how do you get something like this started? What is the, some ways that you really start a program and get into that? So want to begin with kind of stepping you through the startup process. So again, just to walk through everyone and kind of look through this is how do you get started? Well, in this case, you need to have that, um, that growing structure, okay? So in this case, we have our hydroponic system where uh, you're gonna need things like lights. It has to have grow lights, the ability to actually, um, the right visual light lighting, the, the um, rays that you need, so then you can actually have the plants to be able to grow. Next thing you need is fans. The reason for this is you need to have that um, that movement of the and the the of the uh, the wind to be able to strengthen your plants, make sure that they are growing properly, and and really keeping them healthy in that sense. Now, sometimes in this this closed environment too. It can come about and sometimes people say, you know, well, other problems can happen. So mold is a good example, or um, maybe you do get a certain type of fly or um, uh, insect that could be a problem for this. The thing about that then too is those are all things in a closed environment in this opportunity, you can start and really focus in on, and I would say less variables. So there are ways to prevent those. There are ways to be able to do that. When we have our hydroponic systems, one of the things that will cause things like algae or, or molds or things of that nature is your temperature, your amount of light that you're letting into your, um, uh, onto your water, things of that nature. And so there's ways that you can work through that and, and try to reduce some of that in a closed system. Now, you're always gonna have some sort of 
uh, challenge that you have to work through. But again, it's that learning opportunity, that ability that can help. And that's where then, again, water pumps is another thing, being able to circulate the water, but not only the water, but also the nutrients. So you have to put the nutrients in and be able to uh, circulate it. So working through kind of this understanding of a hydroponic system. And, and, and again, these are the key variables. There are some other variables, but really the, the main variables of kind of growing your, your plants one of the things that we want to talk about is, okay, if you're interested in this, how would you get started? So in this case, one, we really would encourage you and we say, do your research. And we have um, some great uh, opportunities in, in our hydroponic systems to be able to see what it does, be able to see um, how it works, um, be able to show all, all of those uh, features here. But really what we say is you need to learn what is available, what will work for you. Now, the report, uh, hydroponic uh, units from RealityWorks are shelf-based. Part of that purpose is then so you can fit them in your classroom. So a lot of times if you have a, um, a greenhouse, greenhouses can be very full. So again, this is something that can, uh, on wheels, you can slide it in and put it into a, a place in your classroom. I'm sorry, in your greenhouse. Um, so it is a space saver. It fits uh, very nicely, okay? There are bigger, different types of hydroponic units that are very large, um, very, uh, you know, I guess kind of a larger footprints, take more uh, um, area up and that is fine as well. It's really learn what's available and what works for you. Cause that's the second thing is learn what your time and your space limitations are. Because one of the things you have to look at is, okay, it is something that is going to take some time. Um, it is going to be something that um, you will be um, working through in the sense of uh, your space limitations where this is going to have to sit out, sit here for 20 days, 30 days, 40 days for the whole harvest of your plants. So what kind of space do I have to give to this? And then also think about the outcomes you're looking to accomplish. So, you know, some of these uh, um, uh, outcomes could be, you know, well, I want my students to see the growing process. I want my students to experiment and see if they can change an outcome or grow something faster or see if it can grow in um, this type of uh, method of growing. Um, so what are you trying to accomplish? Is it something where, hey, I want certain types of plants so then I can then make salads or can make something with this um, and my students can, can eat that? Is it something where I am wanting my students just to understand photosynthesis, just to understand the whole um, growing process? And so this is how we're gonna do it because we can do it in, in a hands-on manner. What is What are you looking for and how are you going to be um, showing that? And there's ways to also do this with hydroponic systems too. And especially now with our remote learning, if you can get this started, um, you can do webcams. So you can show the growth and have students go on and be able to see um, the growth day after day and be able to do some laps growing. There's a lot of different options there that can, can help you in that. But really um, do your research. There's YouTube videos, there's books. It's, it's a big piece. And as we come into the summer months, now might be the time to start looking and, and doing some of that research. Next one is create a plan. So, you know, part of this plan is, okay, what do I want to um, start growing? And, you know, and kind of looking at, okay, if I start in the fall, and I'm going to do it during the school year. Um, what does that look like? How many different times can I grow? And so with our, our uh, visual here, you know, days to maturation, you know, some of these can take 30 days. Some of them can take different types of plants can take 50 days, 60 days. How many turns, if you want to say, how many times can we um, harvest different types of plants? That might decide, okay, I'm going to totally focus on these types of plants. Or, you know what, I want a variation because some I want to be um, growing for a while, I move those out, put new stuff in, some will still be in the, um, the plant sites there. And so what is your kind of growing date? And when's your harvest date? And then a big piece is what materials do you need? Now, again, the great thing about the hydroponics is that there is kind of less focus on soil and soil nutrients and more focus on your water levels, your amount of nutrients you put in the water. Um, there's also some of those uh, uh, features there um, that can also be um, checked on that um, you would look at, in this case, materials that you would say, hey, I need, you know, these five, six materials, and that's going to keep me going versus 
okay, something in the, you know, a outdoor environment, there's a lot of different things that could be needed and, and changing of soil and stuff like that. So this really kind of reduces the number of different um, variables. And so that's the thing where you can start looking and saying, okay, what are the main things? Now, give you an example, you know, main, once you get your system, you're going to need nutrients for it. And there's a lot of different types of, uh, um, of liquid nutrients that you can put into water. You just need to be able to do the math and know how um, to how much to give. And then also to trial and error, check those different things. Um, it's also something where you'll need to be able to um, uh, replenish the water and change the water or add water because one of the things that will happen is that you'll have some um, humidity and, and some uh, uh, the um, the water will just evaporate. And so you have to continue that. But a lot of it, then again, it reduces the amount of uh, materials that you're going to need as you kind of go through and um, look at that. So creating a plan. And then also, what are your expectations for your students? You know, what jobs or, or are different things that you want them to be a part of? How did they help the process in itself too? Next one here is expect challenges and triumphs. So in this case, you know, um, growth happens. And one of the things with growth is that there's going to be some trials, there's going to be some errors that are made. And that is going to be tough at some place because it's not going to be perfect. And so you have to work through, okay, if things fail or if things don't go exactly what I want, well, what is the learning opportunities there? What are the things that if it all goes really well, what are we going to do with that? What are those uh, triumphs? And then again, share those experiences. And sometimes a great experience and a learning experience can be that trial as, or that challenge as much as it is that triumph. So um, really the you know big key here is that there are going to be some, some hiccups, um, some things. One of the things we found from some of our customers is they were right in the middle of growing season when um, they had to leave their classroom for COVID-19. And so they had to stop growing for that time and they will pick it up or they brought them home to be able to um, do that again. So there are some things there and share those experiences with your students because it's a great learning opportunity. Now, we're going to talk um, with one of our experts at RealityWorks here, um, and that is our fourth piece, and that's learn from others. So um, I did a video uh, chat yesterday with our lead test engineer, David Brack. And one of the things that he talks about is just his experience with growing. He's been growing and using our systems for the last year um, with a lot of different plants, a lot of different produce, um, everything from butternut lettuce to um, cucumbers and, and sh uh, sugar peas and, and just goes down the list, trying different things, growing them, seeing how they work. Because one of the things we do is we test and test and retest, making sure that these products work well. So wanted to just share a little video with his um, uh, interaction with me, asking him some of the questions that he has found um, and, and things that he has seen as um, he grows with hydroponics. How many different plants have you um, grown in the last year, would you say? Uh, it's, it's between 20 and 30 different types of plants. Okay. Um, so 20 to 30 different types of produce that you've grown with the hydroponic systems. Um, and on average, uh, what would you say a growing time would be for these plants um, from, you know, putting the seedling into the, the system to actually um, harvesting them? The quickest are your leafy green type plants, mm -hmm. the, uh, um, the microgreens, the arugula, mm -hmm. um, and then the uh, the lettuces like uh, black seeded ruby red um, butter crunch type of lettuces they they all you know took about twenty two to twenty six days to from when you put it in the system until when you harvest really wow so within about twenty six days or just under a month you can have um, lettuce or some sort of leafy green um, to be able to harvest that's pretty awesome so um, what was the best plant or produce that you have grown or you've seen grown in, in your experience uh, it's definitely the leafy greens uh, tend to grow best in the uh, plant okay. uh, lab type uh, of a growing system mm -hmm. Um, the lettuces, of course, uh, already mentioned, but uh, the herbs as well. Um, I do need to mention those. Um, mm -hmm. Cilantro, the dill, um, 
Oh, make a great pesto sauce with it. <laughs> so that that's awesome. So you can do kind of that culinary thing where you can do herbs and you can do um, not just lettuce, which probably a lot of people think, oh, it's for lettuce, but there's a, a lot of different things. What's the most unique thing that you've seen? Uh, growing some of the flowering type plants, um, jalapeno peppers and oh. uh, cucumbers. Um, now you huh. can't do a whole shelf of the cucumbers, but you can certainly put a couple on the side and train the vines. Okay. Um, and you have to pollinate. Um, I used a, a brush to pollinate the cucumbers and the jalapenos. I used a pipe cleaner. Um, really? Huh. Yes. yes. And there are sexes actually to the plant. I mean, uh, some blossoms have the male portion and some blossoms have the female portion. So you have to identify that. So it's a great learning tool uh, as well. I was going to say, that sounds, that sounds like an, a great learning opportunity where you're talking about, you know, the growing of them, but then also pollinating them so you can get in that world, um, how they all work. So, wow, that's pretty, pretty interesting from that side. And then just to be able to walk away with, I'm not a jalapeno person, but people who like those, they can grow that right there and, and have them right. to be able to, to um, see how they grow too. Absolutely. Very interesting. Very interesting. And, you know, you think about the other learning opportunities on this, it's the the water pH level, it's the mm -hmm. nutrient levels, um, how much do I need to add to the system, the journal taking. Mm -hmm. um, so it's all of that type of work too. That's, it's just a fantastic learning tool. Yeah, so it gives students a, a breadth of opportunity to try different things to learn about, to understand about, and then really see from, you know, seed to uh, the plate what they are growing and then what they're going to be eating. So Exactly, exactly. Yeah, you start the seeds off in a germination dome and mm -hmm. you can record uh, how many days it takes till germination. Um, and then, yes, uh, if you start seeing a root coming out of the bottom of the rock bowl, you place it inside of the hydroponic system and journal all this stuff. And uh, yeah. yeah, it's really, it, it's fun while you, while you test in my instance, but it'll yeah. be fun while you learn for all of our <laughs> customers. Yeah. Well, and like you said, I mean, if you're looking at 20 to 30 different types of uh, produce that you can create from this and plants that you can do. I mean, there's just a, a very degree of opportunity there to learn um, in that world. So. Absolutely. Absolutely. So let me ask you this. What are some plants that didn't work well in a hydroponic system? Because I know not everything will work well. So. Uh, in our systems, um, it was the uh, tuber type plants. I okay. believe that's the correct word for it. It's, mm -hmm. you know, like carrots, uh, radishes. Um, I didn't personally try potatoes, but mm -hmm. I would not mm -hmm. recommend uh, potatoes either. But okay. Yes, those and, and those are kind of things that grow down, like usually into the soil in that world where hydroponics is really growing up upward in that sense. So I could see why that, those would be. So you won't be able to do those types, but there's a plethora of other different things, um, you know, that you were able to from tomatoes and cucumbers to lettuces to, you know, um, different types of kale and um, different types of, of plants in that world. So yeah, yeah, sweet peas and uh, huh. bush beans. It's, it's great. It's fun. Okay. Huh. And it sounds like it where you can just, you know, you can, tr you, you can use these to kind of test your skill, but also, I mean, it is it's a challenge so that then kind of is some of the features that uh dave wanted to kind of share with us is just that is that there's some product that can just grow really really well and then there are some where again um talking about the tubulars things that are, are growing in the soil it's not going to work as well so again that kind of um trial and error but also testing and then also asking the experts, looking to see um, how you can get help and, and understanding what is the best way to do some of these things. As he stated, you know, and, and he gave an antidote to me of, of, you know, one of the things that we found is that we can reduce the time of, of growing lettuce to about 25 days. So that allows, and the, as you do it over and over again, to get more crops throughout a year's time. Another thing is that there are certain types like uh, red shard lettuce where it's something where you can actually harvest it and after you harvest it, if you leave the roots for a little while, it will start growing again. And so there's different things that you can work with and, and interact with with your, your students and, and get them to understand what's happening in that world. The last one that I wanted to share with is 
is really just do it. Do it is the what do you need to do? And again, after you've done uh, one through four, those kind of key things of doing your research, checking with the experts, talking, looking at different ways to do that is to do it is start the process. You've done your plan, you've worked with that. So now, you know, create a space to start growing, incorporate the hydroponic growing system that works best for you, and then act on your plan, get going and, and trying it. Because again, that trial and error will be something that again, can also show your students or who you're working with that yeah, by doing this, this is how we find out we figure it out. Don't be afraid to fail. Don't be afraid to do that. But also work in a way that works well for you. So really understand what you're looking for, how you're going to do it. And then there are systems out there that can really help you be successful every single time. And that's where I kind of want to start working and going with us now in the last time here is there are great learning opportunities and we have some products that can help you in that world. We have some um, systems and we want to show you the curriculum that our systems include. So, you know, one of the things that I'm seeing is, you know, is are there different ways that can be helpful um, in this world? And, and yes, one of the things that I want to share with you is our hydroponic curriculum and what we have to offer. So one of the things that can help you is we have um, a user guide that walks you through all the steps of how to get started, um, what nutrients to use, what types of, um, how long you should be germinating um, and getting your, your, uh, your uh, seedlings ready and, and walking through all those different things. In this case here, some um, focus or how we kind of create our lessons is we always have a focus to get those students attentions. We then get into a learn and we finish with a review. And so um, really the curriculum here again, it is online for you. It is free. So you can go and grab our curriculum and use it. You can grab our user guides. Um, and, and, and the link is right here for um, the resource of how to grow this in school and, and help you in that world. And so want to just walk through some of those things. So our focus here is, you know, what is hydroponics? the types of hydroponics that you can use, and then the main parts of the system. So in this case, it might start with kind of, you know, what do you need to grow plants and grow produce? And for some students, it's going to be, you know, you need soil, you need sunlight, things of that nature. This is where you can change that and ask those questions and, and go into and actually kind of say, no, there's other ways um, that in other places that you can um, get this uh, information and, 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 do this type of, of, uh, of growing without using soil whatsoever. So, you know, there's other variables, weather, climate, biodiversity that you can talk about. And that then leads into, okay, how do you grow with only using water and nutrients and not including soil? How do you do it in a different system where it's not always rows in the ground, but it might be rows in a shelf. It might be in other ways to do that. So this then gets in that learning with the types of system. And so our curriculum and our point PowerPoint slides walks through the different types of systems from a deep water culture to ebb and flow system, drip system, allowing you to be able to look at, okay, what are the very why would this work better than that? What is the kind of um, uh, focus that we would say is best um, for our system? What are you going to kind of be working? So there's um, the, you know, nutrient film um, uh, uh, technique, allowing you to kind of um, see what kind of things and, and, and ways that you, you are growing well, what works best and, and why would you kind of um, use one over the other? There's also other types of, of uh, learning here, things like aeroponics and aquaponics. Um, ours are hydroponics, but there are other ones there for you to be able to use. So the aeroponics and the aquaponics are also other things to walk through and, and say, you know, is that something that would be interesting um, and, and helpful to use? Um, so in this case then, Kind of a review is then, okay, the parts of the hydroponic system. And we have in-depth uh, curriculum and also PowerPoints talking about all the different pieces from, you know, lighting. What kind of lighting do you need your system to have? Grow medium, okay? It has to sit, the seed has to sit in something. And so in this case, it's not soil. So things like rock wool and, and, and other options there to actually um, hold that seed in place. And then use the water and, and gain the water and the nutrients. So water nutrients and then airflow and wind and, and the movement and oxidization of the water and all these different pieces. So that is something that helps in, um, gives that. And again, this is a free resource and we will send you this email with all the links so you can go right to it. Um, and I'll also tell you about it at the end of our little talk here as well. 
So another feature here, another thing is just telling you about our products. So RealityWorks this year was um, awarded a world changing idea award from Fast Company um, for the our hydroponic systems. Um, and we have two different options for two different growing uh, variables. So the first one that we have is our plant lab unit. This is a smaller unit, it is 33 plant sites. And every single shelf here has its own uh, water and nutrient tank, allowing you to have three different shelving units here where you can put different nutrients, different amount of water in each one, allowing you to grow different things. Some uh, uh, produce and plants need more nutrients, some need less, and so you can um, grow different types of, of uh, produce on each shelf here, or you can put the same in on every single shelf and be able to grow that way as well. So that is one of our, our lab units here. And again, it has rollers and it can fit nicely in a classroom into a um, greenhouse area. The other one is our plant producer. This is a much larger unit. Um, it has 42 plant sites. It has a programmability so you can monitor and set, um, sensor in the sense of um, the lights on and off, um, how much sunlight you want it to have, how much uh, uh, um, uh, wind and, and using the fans that you want uh, to be able to uh, movement here. But in this case, it has one tank at the bottom. And so that is moving through each level here. So your nutrients is much more production focused here. So being able to produce a lot of different vegetation at using the same type of um, um, uh, water and veg, uh, and nutrients um, for that product. But two different options that we have that allows you to um, grow produce. So as we finish up here, how do you get these resources that can maybe get you started into a program of your own? So again, our classroom resources, you go to realityworks.com and then you can go in and we have it in our, um, our uh, websites here. You can get it in the agriculture world. We also have our, um, again, COVID-19 response, where if you click on this page here, and this is realityworks.com, you will go right in. And again, your resources, you go down to your guides and curriculum, you click on that, and it'll come down here and it gives you your um, different uh, options to be able to go in and be able to find it. So we have hydroponics and plant science. All you have to do is click on that and it'll bring you right into that world. Also, want to encourage you again to um, go to our um, hydroponics website again right on realityworks.com and what that allows you is we have this hydroponics education implementation all right when you click on that all you have to do is download the hydroponics implementation guide and a lot of the things that we talked about today that helps you kind of get your step by step some of the pieces of okay i'm interested in this what do i need to know it gives you those things of you know nutrients um, your lights, your your wind, all the different pieces of, of the puzzle kind of walking you through, again, getting you ready for that planning of being able to do your um, what you're looking for. Another big tool for you here is we have a, a, a promotional discount right now um, all the way to June 30th of this year, of uh, the fiscal year here. So until the end of the uh, June, you can get 10% off any of our agriculture, any of our hydroponic employability, uh, plant science products. So you can go to our website, um, pick out what products you're interested in, and then there's gonna be an automatic 10% off that you can get through uh, June 30th for those products. So with that all kind of being said, I know there's been a few questions and so wanna to get to uh, some of those. So um, Emily, do we have some questions that we can help answer there? Yeah, um, so the first one that we have, you kind of touched on at the beginning is um, for closed environment, will it allow mold growth or would it prevent it? So um, it would be something where uh, you would have to watch for that. So with a closed environment, there is less chance again, because you can then um, decide and, and work with, you know, your environment of what your temperature is. Is it room temperature, things like that, where you can be able to um, uh, uh, check that and make sure that you're not having that um, as a, a uh, present thing. So because of that closed environment, um, mold could grow again, but you can change it and you can look at it a little different because of the temperature you use, um, the amount of water, your water temperature, there's different things that you can do to help prevent um, uh, that being a problem. So again, because of the, the decrease of variables, that can really help um, reduce any of that mold. And then again, 
that's another piece of keeping your plants healthy with the uh, fans, allowing that to not let your fans sit and then cause mold issues, but at the movement of things like that. So all those different features that are part of the hydroponic system, that really will help reduce any of a problem there. Awesome. And then we have one, is this the same thing as vertical farming? So it is not. It, it, it has similarities to vertical farming. You know, the big difference I would say with vertical farming, well, and again, it depends on your definition of vertical farming, but vertical farming still is a soil-based farming. So in that case, it's, it's they're growing up um, or sometimes it's wall growing, things of that nature. Um, but a lot of times it still has some, um, some sort of uh, soil connection by using hydroponics, there's no soil involved. Um, and then it is also sometimes too with vertical farming where um, in this case, each plant, each seed um, has its own roots, has its own system in its own kind of bucket. It's, um, and so it has a little different connection, but it has some, some variables that can be um, kind of connected to vertical farming, but it is a different kind of system. Perfect. And then if there are different plants, um, would it require different nutrients or, and would you have to replace the nutrients? Yeah, that's a great question. And that's where, again, we have two different uh, hydroponic systems in, in our uh, product lineup, because one is there are some that need different nutrients. And so with our plant lab um, hydroponic system, it has three shelves. And so you can put different amounts of nutrients um, on each shelf and on each, in each different tank based on what that plant needs. So you can grow different plants on each shelf. Um, now, there is also with a plant producer, a lot of times you can, um, and we kind of help with some of this information too in our, excuse me, in our user guide, in our resource that we give is there are a lot of plants that um, can grow with a very similar amounts of nutrients. So there are some plants that you can grow on in the same um, uh, um, system that are very close in what their nutrients needs are. And so in that case, then you can put them right next to each other or on different shelves and they'll get the same amount of nutrients. But again, one of the things that we do is we also give you the pH um, and the EC level and what it should be. So you can then test and check those things to make sure that what you have, the nutrients you have. So then we're giving and, and helping with that. So you can be testing and checking those things out. Perfect. And then any books, videos, or articles that you suggest on additional information, um, especially when thinking about do-it-yourself building benches or systems? Yeah. So the best example I can give is, and and it's not a, a book, but probably videos is, is YouTube um, has a, a plethora of different videos out there um, and, a, and a wide range of different things. So, you know, again, it goes back to what we said about the planning and creating your own plan and, and, you know, what's your space? What are you looking for? What are the things that you you need and then start start doing the research and checking out there um, because we have videos on our product um, we have uh, um, articles and we have our, our guides out there now so you can go grab that see what it does um, but there are others out there and, and maybe you have a different system you know maybe you have the space to be able to um, do a lot bigger than the the 42 um, sites that one of ours has you can put you know multiples of ours in in one location but it might be something that you're looking for something else and so there's there's a lot of uh, just, you know, how to uh, videos out there um, and, and YouTube's a great resource, but uh, um, it isn't, I, I can't give you just one just because um, it really kind of jumps around and, and we, what I've really seen is you grab a little bit from each one. And, and hopefully that's the same thing here is you're taking something away and maybe there's a few things that you want to do different, but you're grabbing from a, a few different places. Perfect. And then in our curriculum, does it talk about growing cut flowers? So we have not gone that far. And one of the things that um, uh, Dave Brack has, has talked about is that, you know, there is a need for flower or there is a need for certain types of produce to pollinate. And he talked about that, you know, actually doing the pollination. Um, we have not gone that far into the, we have gone into pollination of, of produce and kind of on the food side. Um, but our own uh, view has not been in the, the, the cut flowers and growing cut flowers. Now, I have seen, and there are places out there that said you can do that and you can grow them. So that would be kind of a, a new place for us to go. We haven't tested that yet, but there are some places who will do that and have done that before. So again, 
it depends on the flowers and the ability to grow those and and the height and, and what they're they can take but um, there is the ability to do that we just don't have anything on ours um, right now not saying it can't be done um, we've had some uh, customers who have tried different things and and, and um, those types of things have worked out but we just um, have it done in our own offices to to um, try that and then are there any special seeds for hydroponics or will any seed work no that's the great piece is that um, hydroponics you can go out to your your local uh, um, gardening shop you can order online you can get seeds from anywhere um, and as soon as it you know it, you can have a seed sprout you can grow it in a hydroponic system so um, it's not a special seed for hydroponics because the nutrient is still getting to the plant um, the the flow of the water the movement of it is still along it so there's not a special seed that you need to use um, again it really goes down to the types of plants that you can do uh, you know, like we said, carrots and radishes, those aren't going to work. Um, but for pretty much anything else that you can do, um, there's not a special seed. You just have to uh, plant it. Awesome. And then was there any success with tomatoes so far that we've yes. found? Yes. Yes. So we have done tomatoes and it has worked. A big thing with a tomato is, um, you know, with ours is because it's in a enclosed um, uh, framework, of our shelving units, um, especially with our plant producer, the bottom um, shelf of our plant producer is has a, a 20, uh, 20 to 24 inch um, height on it. And so you can grow tomatoes up into it. And a lot of times if you put, um, and basically just you put a trellis on the side of our producer, it will then help those um, plants grow up. And, and that's been um, successful for us, yep. And then how do we combat algae um, if they're like located in the basement at their school? Yeah, so you know the big piece here is how does algae grow? And algae grows with the help of, of sunlight. And so you have the grow lights in, in that. The nice piece and the way you can do that is try to reduce the sunlight and then the algae blooms will um, not grow as much. So how do you do that? Well, in this case, one of the things that you do is you can cover the opening. So you have your plants and, you know, you know uh, we talk about ours where we have 33 uh, plant sites. So 33 openings where you would put your plants in or in our producer, you got 42 plant sites. So in those cases, um, you could fill them all up. Those then would have a... Um, a basket in them and then that would reduce the amount of sun that would get underneath the platform or the um, the holder to get into the water. So if you fill up your whole uh, system with all your sites with plants, there's not going to get a lot of sunlight or the grow light into that water, not going to have a big algae problem. Now, if you put them, space them out, and now you have open holes where then that can get into the water, there's going to be more opportunity for algae bloom. So in this case, what you want to do is just you close those up. You can use a duct tape. You can use a, a cloth. You can do whatever. You close those over. That reduces the amount of algae bloom. So again, by having the system, yes, algae can still grow, but you can reduce it because of the system and how you're actually doing it. Okay, and we got a couple questions here about nutrients. Mm -hmm. um, so does our company offer any nutrients? And then how often would they need to put nutrients in? And then how costly is that? That's a great question. And um, so here's kind of the nutrient side is we are not a supplier of the nutrients. Um, that is something where um, you can get it from a lot of other places, from local stores to it's on Amazon. I mean, it's something where you can buy online and purchase and get it in one or two days. So there's a lot of different places. Now, in our curriculum, I'm sorry, in our user guide, we give examples from our testing, from what we've done of what are the best nutrients. And again, we are um, in there have really two different things. We give, I think there's 14 or 15 different um, places where you can buy seeds. So we try to give examples of, hey, here's where we found success by using these types of uh, seed companies and they have them year round. So those are some options for you. Another piece is we put on there different places that you can buy nutrients from. A lot of them, you know, you can buy them on Amazon. You can buy them directly from those nutrient stores or, or the companies. We all kind of put that into third party, um, having them be in control of that, but you can buy that directly from them. And then it's something where 
um, you know, with that, um, it allows you just to be able to go back to them and, and do that. A lot of times they are, are sold in a quart um, or in a gallon format. Um, with our product and, and our testing of that, um, you can usually buy the amount you need would be, you know, you buy one jug, if you want to say one quart of it. Um, and that can be anywhere from $10 to probably $14 on average. And that amount will get you through a full year of um, being able to grow and, and kind of keep on growing. So on average, you probably can, can you know, add in that. Um, now, again, that depends on how many plants you're growing. That it depends on how many times you're growing, if you're just growing one after another. But in that range, um, your nutrients uh, is something where you're, you're putting it in. And then again, it's, you, you don't have to put a lot at the beginning when you first plant it because your plants are a lot smaller. By the time you're about to harvest it, you're adding a little bit more, kind of more think of uh, adding nutrients once a week versus once every two weeks, things of that nature. So you just kind of um, test and see, but again, um, it's something where if you get a bottle or things of that nature, you're probably looking at um, a amount that you need um, in the 10 to $15 range every, I'm going to say six months to one year, kind of depending on what your needs are. Awesome. And then you said EC levels and someone's just wondering what that meant. Uh, electro connectivity levels. So electro connectivity. Um, and really that is um, talking about how much nutrients is still in the water, kind of working with that. And so um, it's really checking um, to see, okay, you have your water there, but how much of the nutrients has been sucked up or taken up by the plant and how much of it is still in the water to be used later on by the plant. So you check that every so often to make sure that you're saying, oh, I need to add more nutrients because these plants are taking it all up and they're growing from it. Well, if you, you know, don't have enough of that nutrients in the water, then all of a sudden it doesn't have anything to continue to grow. So it's just checking that to be able to go on um, that because as, as the plants grow, they, they take up that nutrients and you just need to keep adding it. So. Um, awesome. And then how often does our hydroponic systems need to be cleaned? So we would say um, in the, in the kind of the hydroponics is the best way to do it is once you have harvested and you know, if it's the one tray on the plant lab, or if it's all of them in the plant producer, once you have harvested, you should probably, um, you know, take all the, the trays out and clean them off. Um, you know, a nice, uh, easy soap and water, um, just wipe them off, wash them off, and then you can put them back in and go. But, you know, it's kind of one of those things is once you've done with a, um, a, uh, uh, a harvest, you would just clean them up. Okay. And again, it doesn't have to be a scrub down. You don't have to bleach them. You don't have to do anything like that. It really is just a soap and water, clean it off, make sure that um, you, you know, if there was algae bloom or anything like that, you just kind of take some of that stuff off and then you can go ahead and, and start um, using it again. So again, you know, if, if you're following our, uh, you can plant something and it takes 25 days or let's say 30 days, you're probably going to clean it every 30 to 35 days, depending on, you know, your needs and, and what it is. And some of them, you know, with the trays, you could do it one at a time. You can do a few of them. Um, we've, it's interesting because we usually will clean them. I know some people who say, oh, we don't clean them. And that um, could be a, 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 something to also look at and being able to um, uh, be able to um, test and, and check out there um, uh, with, you know, hey, does it work better, fully cleaned, somewhat cleaned, you know, where's your take there? So. And then is there somewhere where they can check the nutrients? So can they check the nutrients? Um, I'm assuming like the, the EC amount. level, the amount of level. So yeah, so um, one of the things that you can do is there, you can, you can get a, a uh, EC meter and check it through that. Um, you can do strips for your pH level. And again, we put all that into our curriculum or into our user guide telling you how to go about doing that and getting that. But yeah, it's basically, it's a, um, it's a meter test. You just put it in the water, you check it, and then it will tell you, yep, this is, you know, um, good. And part of that is we'll give you a number. And so you have to go back and our guides, give you what the numbers for most, you know, again, may not be every single plant out there, but for most of the produce that we, that is, that you would use in hydroponics, you can then go and see and say, oh, this level is at a seven and I need to be at a nine. Okay. I'll change to that. So it's just, a, it's just reading a chart in that sense. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And then um, somebody saw that you had the electrical panel or electric 
electronic panel on mm -hmm. your slides. Can you talk more about that? She wants to know, does it show um, pH levels and is it something that the students will use for data collection? Okay, so the um, electronic panel is on our plant producer product and that has a little bit more um, uh, ability to kind of uh, automate the system. So on the electronic panel for the plant producer side, that gives you ability to change how long the uh, the grow lights are on. So you could be 12 hours, you could be 14 hours, you could be 16 hours versus on versus off. Um, you can change the speed of the fans on that and make them go faster, go slower. Um, it has sensors. So if your water level starts to drop because of the plants taking them up and using that water, it then will um, uh, give you, um, you know, what, what, how much, you know, what you need to do to fill that water back up. It gives you some of those kind of um, opportunities with that, kind of automates it a little bit more. With our plant lab, we don't have that electronic panel. It really is kind of, it's set in place, um, allowing you to be able to do, you know, it's, uh, 12 hours on with the fans, 12 hours off the fans. And so the lighting system, it's on and off. You can change that just by when you turn it on and turn it off, but um, it doesn't have that kind of electronic where you can program that in. A little bit kind of more sophisticated with the plant uh, producer. And then, sorry, there was another part of that question. What was the other part of that question? Um use of data collection and then oh. show pH levels. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, so um, there isn't a data, like a pH level, it doesn't read that. You actually have to go in and, and, and um, uh, do that yourself. So it doesn't have a data collection part. Um, that's more on the student side and letting them be able to go and try that and do that. Yep, sorry, that was, I missed that part. <laughs> awesome. And then we do have some questions on our hydroponics resources and kind of what we have on our website. Mm -hmm. um, so people are just wondering the links, who all can get those, and then also are there any grant resources? And then where can they find out information on our hydroponic systems? Yeah, so let me just share again here. Let me try something to make sure that I'm sharing correctly here. Um, because what I'm going to do is I am going to go um, right to our um, website here. Okay. And so I'm just going to show you and walk through that. Um, so here's our reality works website. And the first big piece here is again, this COVID-19 response where you click on that and um, let me, my uh, visuals a little uh, smaller. So let me get a little bit bigger here. So um, again, here's our uh, reality works COVID-19 response. Um, you come down here and it gives you your guides and curriculum. And that's going to be your big piece here where you can go in there and in hydroponics area here, you just click the button, the plus sign, uh, plant producer and plant science. You click on that one. Um, and this is going to give you your user guide, your curriculum um, slideshow. Uh, so you can just um, basically download those pieces for you. All right. So that is everything that you want, all the curriculum, it's downloadable. It's, uh, it's uh, files for you to be able to use. The user guide allows you to, um, I'll click on that here, and it brings you right into our user guide, showing you everything from water pumps and lights, um, and, and, and takes you to all the different products and, and how it works. So that can be a nice little addition for you if that's something where you want to dig a little deeper and see what our products work. Um, the next thing is, uh, on a reality, reality works website here. If you come to the products page here and you click on products, um, the second one down under agriculture is hydroponics. So if I click on that hydroponics page, again, it's under our agriculture world here. Um, uh, and kind of the growing side of things in our plant science world. But then you have your um, different options here uh, to look at the products. But at the very top here, um, it says, uh, you know, the hydroponics education implementation guide. So all you have to do is click on that. Um, and then that will bring you, whoops, there we go, right into our, um, you know, ticks, tips and tricks for starting out. So it kind of walks you through um, what you can kind of think about and how it might work for you in the classroom. So um, that is, is there for you as well um, to be able to use. And then, let me get back here. Um, you can go in and you can view our products itself. 
and it shows um, the usage. So we have some videos, uh, we have different guides, and then we also kind of go through um, and give um, the samples and overviews and specifications that you might be looking for as well. So you can go in there and look at our um, hydroponic systems um, and what you may uh, kind of view and, and see as um, interesting in those, those there. So, all right. All right, well, I don't see any other questions. All right. Right now. Oh, looks like we got all the questions and anybody has access to those links and resources, correct, Jeannie? Yeah, so that's something where um, this will be sent out. We'll send out an email to everybody who is on this and that is out there for you use, your usage. So um, it is something where you can use and uh, um, we want you to use it. And then as you still have questions, you know, come back to us and we'd be happy to help you um, with any needs you have in that hydroponic world. All right, thank you very much, everyone. Really appreciate what you're doing. Um, you know, the big piece here is um, we appreciate the, the hard work that you have, um, that you are doing uh, and, and um, ask that you just keep on keeping on, keep on doing the hard work. We really appreciate um, all that you are, uh, are accomplishing. And um, again, we're here to help in any way possible. Thank you for your time.